All right, so on Wednesday we have an exam. And it is exam two. And here's information about it. And also we need to move forward. And the next topic is arrays and vectors. So there's two things to think about. Moving forward with arrays and vectors and working on those problems. And then also taking the exam, preparing for the exam on Wednesday. Does anybody want me to review anything specifically for the exam? Any problem that you want to look at, talk about? Nothing? All right. So let me talk about um, arrays in that case. And uh, so this is the, the lab, or the assignment on arrays. And so I'll just talk about uh, arrays in general for a moment. Oh, we could do this problem here. So I'll just create some simple uh, arrays and vectors and talk about them. Let's just start with the hello program. Maybe all tests passed, something like that. So we'll... <coughs> We'll experiment with arrays and vectors, and then we'll create tests that uh, validate our understanding and our concepts that uh, that we uh, that we that we discuss about arrays and vectors. Oops. So it's uh, using namespace uh, std. So we got that set up. Now let's take a look at, um, first we'll start with uh, vectors. And you declare a vector like this. It has to be a vector of some data type. I'll call it V. That's how you declare it. But you need to put the data type in there. You know, that data type could be a string. You know, it could be a double. Uh, it could be an egg carton, like in the user-defined data types. It could be a user-defined data type. Uh, but let's, the easiest one to use, the one that I use a lot in this class, is int, so a vector of int. And a vector is a container, so it contains integers. When you create a vector like this, using this syntax, a vector of in, then it's an, it's an empty container. And we can add values to this uh, to container. And it's just a container that's a sequence. It's a sequence of items, all of the same data type. And we can add things to the container using the pushback function. So this vector is a is a is a is an object and we can use the dot notation to call functions on the object just like you know our our school bus class or number class or egg carton class all those examples the bean jar class those example uh, classes that uh, that are in the course materials either I presented on them or they're in that on those web pages that I have uh, so, uh, so vector is another example of a class, but it's a class that's supplied with the compiler. So it's it's a part of what's called the standard library. The standard C++ library contains the definition of this vector class, and it's, it's a special class in that it's um, 
parametrized by a data type. So when we use the class here, the class name, we follow it with this, these angle brackets with the, with the data type inside the angle brackets. So this gives the type of item that's stored in the vector. So it's called a template class, actually. The class itself is a, it's a template. Out of this, you can create a vector of int, or a vector of double, or a vector of string, and so on. So it's a template that's used to create more specific classes based on some selected data type here. So we push back some values, like say we push back the, the value 3. So this adds it. So now at this point, the, the vector v looks like this. Just has one value in it. Here, the vector v is empty. It just looks like we could visualize it like that. It has no items in it. It's still a container. It's ready to take items, but it's empty. And then if we um, if we push back, um, say a nine, now the container looks like this. It has two items in it. The first item is three. The second item is nine. And we can access those items using an index. So we can say. Um, we can use that notation v of 0, or v square bracket 0. So this is the item at position 0. So remember, in, in computer science in general, not always, but in general, that uh, labeling of sequences starts at 0. Counting starts at 0. So the first position in the array, or the vector, is position uh, zero. And so we use the position value in these square brackets to, uh, to, to select uh, which item that we want in that container. So this should print three. And v of one, the value at position one, should print nine. Yep. Undeclared identifier vector. <coughs> the compiler tells us that it doesn't know what a vector is. Remember the vector is a it's a data type and that's a part of the standard library. <coughs> and we need to include its definition using this header file, vector, <coughs> and to include vector. It still gives us a problem. Can you include C standard library? C, S, T, L, I, V? S, T, V, L, I, V? C standard library? Yeah. Before. What what relies what what uh, relies on that? Since vector was in the standard library, so I thought you might have to put the C standard. I don't think that's going to do it. I'll try it because I I thank you for the suggestion. I don't think that's going to do it. What's that? Forgot to put the add the Ah, that's the problem. It's not this. Thank you. I forgot the L on the end. Vector is in the standard library, but it's defined in this header. So it's sufficient to include that header. You don't need to include C standard library. Not, not necessary. That looks good now. It is 3, 9. Once again, v of 0 is 3, v of 1 is 9. And we can turn these into tests now. We're going to assert that um, v of 0 is 3. 
and we'll assert that v of 1 is 9. So we just now instead of doing visual inspection for the test, we'll automate that so we don't have to look at it and verify it visually, manually. We, we write the code to, uh, to run the test. All test paths, there it is. Now there's another function which is very useful, and that's the size of function. The size of the vector at this point is 2. There's two values in it, a 3 and a 9. So the size function should return 2. But before we push any values, the size of that function, the size of the vector should be 0. See that? v dot size returns the size of v, the how many items are in v. Now let's. Um, Let's write a function called double values. We'll double the values of some vector that gets passed into it. So we pass in a vector of 3 and 9, it'll return a vector of um, 6 and 18. Okay, double values. And there's two ways of doing this. I mean, this will do the job for our particular test data. Well, not, not exactly. So there's two, two ways that we could do this. Let me see. That's, uh, we can return a vector of int take the vector of int and return the vector of int. Or we can take the vector, and, and here we, we return, I'm just trying to scratch this out and explain ideas to you, so not much to take notes on right now. So this function, I'm going to return, I'll take the vector v, and, don't, and not modify it, but I'll return a new vector that contains the values that are doubled. And this other function, I'll take the vector of v and then modify it in place. So I'll modify the vector gets, that gets passed into us. If we want to modify the vector that gets passed into us, then we have to take a reference. See that? But if we want to return a new value, we can also take a reference, because then we don't have to create a new vector, a copy of the vector, and vectors can be large. But we want, um, want to declare the, this as const. So this reference is a constant reference. In other words, we're not going to modify, we're not going to use the reference to modify the object. But this one we cannot declare it as const because we want to modify the object B. So 
So here's one way to do it. There's other ways to do it. So we create a new vector of int. We have to remember it's a vector of int. We create a new vector of int w. And we, we, we call pushback twice. So if w is initially empty. We double the first value, push that back, double this, or double the second value, push that back, and return w, our copy. Now this is only going to work for vectors that are of size 2. But we want to be able to take a, a generic vector of any size. So we need to use a loop. This is how the loop would look. So we run through all the values of v, all the valid indices in v. We start at index 0. And we go as long as um, the index is uh, less than the size of v. And this is, uh, so this will get um, a vector of, of arbitrary size. So we do the same thing for this other version of the function. So we can uh, I'll call this um, call this double values two and double values one. So. So these are some tests that we have already. We'll just leave those there. Let's call double values two. We pass in v. And we call double values two, we get a new vector in return. It's a vector of int. Call it um, A. I don't want to confuse people with W. So this should double the values that are in V. So we can use this code here. So we look at a, a should be you know, 3 times 2 and, and 9 times 2. The size of uh, a should be 2. Let's take a look at that. Looks good. What about the other function? Double values um, one. Let's do another test. Remember, double values one doesn't return anything. It operates on the vector we pass in. So we pass the v in. Now v of 0 is no longer 3, it's 3 times 2, it's 6. And v of 1 is 18, the size remains 2.
So I'm showing you the syntax on how to operate with um, vectors, the concept of what a vector is. It's a, a sequence of values. It's a container. Organ it's a container organized as a sequence of some data type. In our, the case we're looking at is int, but we could use other data types. And when we write functions to operate on vectors, we can either have the function operate on the vector itself that gets passed in, like double one, double values one. Or it can make a, it can, <coughs> it can read only from that vector and perform some operation based on what it reads without modifying the vector that gets passed in. In that case, we need to create a, another vector and at the end of the function return that. So it's two different approaches there. In many cases, vectors are very large. And um, if we can get away with this type of function, it makes more sense. We have a vector with a million items. We want to double everything in that vector. We don't want to make a copy unless we have to. And so we just operate on the vector uh, directly without making any copies. This is how we do that. Now let's look at another similar way of organizing data called arrays. And uh, the, vector, the vector class, the vector template class, is a part of the C++ library, or the C++ language. And it was added to, um, you know, C++ evolved out of a language called C. <coughs> And the vector was one of the uh, one of the things that was added to the language. But in the original language, they had a way to operate on sequences of values. Uh, they used something called an array. An array is not a class. It's a um, it's a um, it's a way to work more directly with memory. So the vector, you know how we used pushback with vectors. With arrays, when you create an array, you allocate a block of memory, and it stays the same size. So an array is inflexible. Its size cannot change. You have to destroy the array and allocate a new array if you want to change its size. So I'm going to show you how to do the same things we were just looking at using arrays. So let's create an array. At So an array of int. Here, this is equivalent to you know, creating v and then pushing back 3 and 9. Now this line will fail because arrays are not objects. They don't. We don't have access to uh, functions that are that we call through the dot notation. They're not. Uh, they're not instances of a complex data type like vector is. So we just have to keep track of the fact that. A has size 2. So it's, it's not something that's built into the array. It's not information that's embedded in this object called A. But that's what we get with vectors. Vectors are more convenient to work with because they have functions that we can evoke on them. And it has flexibility. It can be resized. It has a size function and other functions.
I'll leave these alone for now. So this is one way to create the array. And then I'll show you another way. Let's create another array called B of size 2. I think that's valid. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's good. And then um, B of 0. We'll set it to 3. And um, B of 1, we'll set it to 9. Now A and B are the same. We just created them in different ways. Let's check the, let's, let's run this test with, uh, with B. So these are just two different approaches using different syntax different steps to create uh, the same vector, the same array, rather. Here we declare b as an array. We say we want the size to be 2. But <clears throat> the array is not initialized. In most modern languages, when you create an array like this, it'll be initialized to zeros. But in C++, it does no initialization. So you get random values in memory. So you can't rely on the values that are in B after you create it like this. But this syntax here, we create the array A, but we don't tell what size it is in these brackets. The brackets are used as notation to let the compiler know that this is an array. But we don't specify the size. The size is derived from how many items are passed into this initialization expression. So we use uh, brackets with the values that we want to put in there. So it's just a different approach. This is the, I think this syntax here may not be supported on very old compilers, I think. But this syntax is the older version. So the, all these languages evolve over time. Even the C language, which is very old, has new uh, versions of it coming out all the time. And in most cases, uh, compiler writers adjust the uh, compilers to accommodate changes in the, in the language. And, and the, you have these international committees that get together and decide what the new features of the language should be. And it's, the language definition is maintained by a, standard, a standards organization, international standards organization. Of course, compiler writers are free not to follow the standard, but generally they do. All right. Uh, so let's look at how we would write these, uh, these functions here. Let's look at uh, double values here. Let's suppose we have an array of int. It looks like that. We don't know what the size is here. We just, pass, we just say it's an array of int. At the loop, i starts at 0. It has to be less than some size. I'm using a instead of v because you know the word array starts with an a. V. Is, uh, is the first letter a vector. So just a, it's a, the name is a reminder that it's an array and not a vector. But the thing is, in this function, the function doesn't know what size is. And we generally want to write the function in a way that's independent of the size of the, of the array. That means we need to pass in a second argument. We have to pass in the size of the array separately from the array pointer itself, the array reference. Now we know the size of the array. We can write the loop. Uh, 
So let's let's call that double values. Pass in the um, array A, and uh, the size of A is two. So now, after calling double values, each value should now be doubled. So we'll check those assertions. <coughs> oh. This is double values of one. Looks good. Once again, all tests passed. One thing that's bothering me is I, I called this double values one, uh, and I have it following double values two. I should put it like that. You know, um, it, it's good to always be maintaining a good organization and good naming in your code. It, it's easier to keep track of what's going on and to build on your program that way. What about um, what about this? You know, I haven't thought about this one. I, this might be tough to do. Double values too. How would we return? I'm not going to do this one. I don't want to do that one. I might have to get into pointers and stuff that I'm not going to get into. So double value is one, and since there is no two in this program, I'm going to take the one out of there. There it is. Any questions on um, on arrays or vectors so far? These are the programs that you need to work on. You know, this is how. Oh, this is a two-dimensional array. We can talk about that. There's another two-dimensional array. Now, at this point in uh, lab six, at this point in the class, we we're talking about arrays. I think it's chapter, is it chapter six in the book? It's arrays. That's the, we don't go beyond that. That's the end. And then this binary search, sorting, application, it's all, all of these problems that are coming up are all based on what you learn up to this point. So we're not learning any more syntax or C++ language uh, features. We might a little bit, but I just don't know what it is. So we, we're stopping on the chapter on arrays and vectors. The chapter that follows that is on pointers. So that's in the next class you'll pick up from there. Probably the instructor will review uh, arrays and vectors first. So this is the last, this concept of an array and a concept of a vector, this is the last kind of language concept that you've got to grapple with. And then your energy and time uh, needs to be spent uh, trying to solve these programming problems, to learn how to take the knowledge of the language that you have and construct solutions to these, these uh, computing problems. Let's talk uh, maybe about the the um, two-dimensional arrays first, because that's a, that's something that uh, we need to cover. Uh, 
All right, let's um, get rid of this. All right, let's suppose we have a two-dimensional array A. And I'm going to guess at the notation right now. Maybe this is not right. And how do we initialize two-dimensional array A? You know, I'll start with the old notation. That's what I'll do. Let me start with the old notation. So these are the rows. Say there's two rows and three columns. So you can think of it as a, as a matrix, a table with two rows and three columns. And um, now we need to assign values. Let's put into um, position 0, 0. So that's row 0, column 0. Let's put the, uh, the value 4. I just want to make sure that I've got the uh, syntax right on that. Still not sure of the syntax, but it's all right. So it took that. The other way to do it would be something like this. Does that work? Let me see. That does not work. So this syntax, which is valid in another language, is not, not valid in this language. So let's, uh, let's draw a picture of what this might look like. So two rows and, uh, and three columns. Maybe it looks something like this. Here's an array, a, a, a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns. So this is position uh, zero, 0, right here. This is a row 0, column 0. This is position uh, zero, 1, row 0, column 1. And then <laughs> row 0, column 2, which is the third column of row 1, is a 9. And we do the same thing for, um, for row 1, but with different values. Minus 1. Oops. That didn't work. 11 and 5. So we could do the assertions, but if we wait on that, let's see if that, that works. So this is all in a, this is a multi-line comment. <coughs> Open the comment here and close the comment here. That's what I had wrong with the compilation. Let's see if we can uh, get an alternative syntax working. Let's try to declare B as a two-dimensional array 
to be, I'm going to guess at this, four, six, nine. Minus one, eleven, and five. Let's see if that works. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So I'm just guessing at this. Let's see if that works. It does not work. Array has incomplete element type. Somehow it did not like that. This is not going to work. How do we initialize a two-dimensional array? Anybody know? Oh. Well, they do like a a column at a, t a row at a time. <coughs> oh, like this. I have to give the size. So there's two rows. I think that'll work just like that. I'm going to guess that that works. You have to tell the compiler there's two rows. Let's see if that works. That does not work. Let's try two rows, three columns. That worked. So you have to be, you have to tell it uh, how many rows and columns. It's not going to guess it. And I wonder if we omitted if we omitted these braces, we get the same result. What do you think? Let's try that. That seems to work as well. But that's uh, hard to read. This is, uh, I think, better. So anyway, these two different ways of initializing uh, two-dimensional arrays. Let's write some uh, functions. We'll write this function called double values. Let's, let's suppose we call it double values. And it, it takes something, OK? I'll just write it like that for now. <coughs> And we'll call uh, double values. We pass in this array. Okay. Now, the arrays don't have any size information built into them. The size information has to be passed around uh, separately. In fact, the, um, you know what, how am I going to do this? I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to pass in the number of columns. And uh, that means here, Take an array A, 
which has two rows and some unknown number of columns. I think that this is how to do it. And then, uh, then you can pass in the column size here. Let's see if that builds. So this is a, um, so it doesn't like this. This is, uh, let me take it out like that. Incomplete data type. How do we pass in a two-dimensional array into a function? I don't remember the syntax. I'm trying to do it without pointers. Oh. Get that wrong. We must know the number of columns. We pass in the row size. So the row size is two. Let's see if that works. That works. Can you believe that? And the issue that's going on there is um, it has to do with how the values are laid out in memory. So first you lay out the, a row at a time. So the first row is laid out. So three integers, one, two, three. Then the next row, one, two, three, like that. And um, so it, it needs to know, the compiler needs to know how many, how big the columns are. And uh, then we would write a function something like, um, you know, that would be, we, we would have to know in advance that the column size is three. How about if we did this? In our assignments, by the way, this is all you need is this. So let's, let's specify the, the row and column size in advance. And then uh, we just pass in the, the array identifier like that. That's good. So in the exercises, this is all you'll need to do like that. So this will be uh, rows, we'll use i for rows. And uh, we'll use j for uh, columns. That's it. That's how we double every item in A. Let's check that. When we double A, we put some assertions there. So now A is um, 4 times 2. That's the first row. Second co first column, 
uh, first row, second column, first row, third column. This is, um, what, six and nine. We do the same thing for the second uh, row. Minus one. Oops. Minus one, eleven, and five. Good. So this is what we'll do in the assignment. Actually, we'll do, we're going to do something a little bit differently. It'll look like this. We're going to declare some constants, like that. Rows and calls will define as constants. And then the function will be defined as taking rows and calls. And notice I, I wrote these constants in uh, all caps. That's the convention for constants. This is what we will use in the assignments. So we tell the compiler that with this keyword const <clears throat> that the value will never change in the program. So when the compiler gets to this point, it needs to know, it can't take an ordinary variable here. It needs to know exactly how much memory is needed in order to do the compilation. So this won't compile. If we remove this as const, this won't compile. And uh, that's kind of it. That's the overview. There's a lot of problems to work on in here. Finding the maximum value. You know, you get an array A, and you get the number of elements in A. So when you write the loop, you know, you know how many times to run the loop. You look at the first item, look at the second item, look at the third item, all the way up to the last item. And you're trying to find the largest value. So each time you look at a new item, you say, well, <clears throat> is this bigger than everything I've looked at so far? So you need a variable that keeps track of the biggest value you've seen so far. So let's suppose the biggest value you've seen so far is 9. You look at the next value, and it's 11. You say, well, OK. I need to update my record of what the biggest value is. It's not 9, it's now 11. And then you keep looking at the next value all the way through. And then when you're done, you go back to that variable, which is the biggest value seen so far, and it's 11. I said, well, that must be the biggest value I found. So I'll return 11. So that's how you implement my maximum in words. I just described it. So you're, what you need to uh, practice and get good at is taking that idea of what the function has to do and uh, implementing it. So you have to figure out, using the syntax and the techniques that, uh, that you've learned to this point, how do you implement this function? And also write the test code for it with the assertions. So you would create, in the test code, you would create some array, single dimensional array. You populate it with values and look at what the largest value is that you put in there. Call this function get the return value, the maximum value, and then use an assert statement to see that it's what you expect. All right.
Any, any questions? Anybody want to talk about the exam? We have a few minutes left. Or arrays, vectors, nothing? So that's it. That's all the new syntax that I think we're going to get. Now it's just a matter of practice from, from now to the end of the quarter. All right, we'll see you later.